Okay, so that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Bible verse that Carol read, thank you, was what we typically call Pentecost. No, it is not Pentecost Sunday, but we are talking about it anyways, because it is a huge holiday in our tradition, and yet so often we just kind of run right past it and we forget about it, especially because a lot of times it falls on Memorial Day weekend. So we're celebrating fire in a different way by the lake, right, a lot of us? So we need to stop and focus because it is a monumental point in our Christian tradition. It was a monumental point in the Jewish tradition too. Pentecost was actually the ceremony where they celebrated the law of Moses on Mount Sinai. And it was one of the three Jewish festivals that if you live nearby Jerusalem, you were expected to attend. It was required that you attended the Pentecost festivals. So here come the disciples and they're all gathered in community and they're gathered together, maybe in the upper room where the first communion took place. We're not quite sure, but we do know they were together. And as they were together, they were invaded. They were invaded by three supernatural signs. There we go. Supernatural sign number one, the sound of a blowing wind. Think about a violent wind. It is uncontrollable. It is absolute power, right? Even these thunderstorms we've had the last couple days, no wind coming through. You can't stop the wind. There's nothing you can do about it. We know it can be hugely destructive too. It is an absolute power. So when this supernatural sign came through like a violent rushing wind, it is the divine presence of God. It is God rushing in and saying, here I am. And it is a supernatural sign that is a genuine miracle. The second supernatural sign in the story is it says tongues of fire on everyone. Let's do our little children's message. Tongues of fire, right? That's the fire that we were talking about with the kids, that it comes through and it lands on everyone. It is a physical manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit saying, look, here I am. I'm physically here and you are safe. You are safe. And it lands on everyone. Everyone is equal. Everyone has opportunity. It does not matter any of the boxes that we put people in. This miracle is for everyone. Supernatural sign number three. Everyone was unfilled with the Holy Spirit. So rushing wind, tongues of fire, now filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in tongues. This represents the power of God through divine inspired speech. It is the universal language of the divine coming upon the disciples as they are gathered together. It is truly a miracle. As we've been talking about miracles last week and this week, the idea is we don't really see a lot of miracles in today's day, do we? Or we don't often think we do. Or we don't often recognize them as miracles. But these three supernatural signs are just that. They are God coming in physical manifestation as a miracle into our world to say, here I am. This passage closes with this verse. It says, as the Spirit enabled them. As the Spirit enabled them. Why does this matter? The Spirit gives it empowers people for the tasks of that they've been called to. It's the spirit has come. It's the rejoining. It's a reunification with God the Father. Through the spirit, we realize what the Father God is doing. Through the spirit, we are directed and empowered so we can fulfill our call. We are being equipped for mission in this world. The Holy Spirit both communicates God's love to us and it brings us into God's love. Holy Spirit is the source of all guidance. It's a source of day-to-day courage. 
It's the source of all power for those who believe. One of the miracles in the story is that we are called to do God's work. And we are empowered to do it through the Holy Spirit the exact same way the disciples were. When the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples in that room, it was saying, you are reunified with God and you are being sent out to do God's mission. And I'm going to tell you what God's mission is. I'm going to empower you to do God's mission. And we're going to bring glory to God our Father. It is the exact same thing for us. The Holy Spirit comes upon us and says, you have a mission. And you are being sent out to do your mission. And I'm going to empower you. I'm going to equip you to do that. We should be craving this miracle of the Holy Spirit. We should be craving this empowerment to do God's work. And yet, so often, we kind of forget that there's this third person of the Trinity. We kind of move through life and we think about God the Creator or God the Father. We think about Jesus the Son. And so often, we walk right past the Holy Spirit. Even though the Holy Spirit is God right now in our earth, in our hearts, in physical manifestation, in our world. And so often we ignore it. Why are we not praying to the Holy Spirit? Why are we not crying out, Holy Spirit, I need you? I don't do that enough, do you? We cannot ignore the power of the third person, the power of the Spirit that is with us today. Pentecost brought the apostles what they needed for their job. And he does the same for us today. There's a couple quotes I found that I really love. This was um, from some of my seminary classes. From theologian, his name was Siemens. Through relationship with the Holy Spirit, we are enabled and empowered to participate in the ongoing ministry of Jesus to discern what the Father wants us to do. So remember, at this point in time, Jesus had ascended and the Holy Spirit descended in us and on our world to empower and enable us. The other thing he says is this, there can be no life without the life giver, no understanding without the spirit of truth, no fellowship without the unity of the Spirit. No Christ-likeness of character apart from his fruit. And no effective witness without his power. I said that River, who sang today, was a perfect example of what happens when you step out in faith to share your faith, to invite somebody. She is a student and at Celine High School that comes to youth group or comes to our student ministry because a friend invited her to. And the Spirit of God spoke through that friend and spoke through her this morning, didn't she? We have a job to do, but we are not called to do it on our own. In fact, we cannot do it on our own. My family's Bible verse comes from John 10.10. When we adopted our children, we also adopted a family and a life Bible verse. John 10.10 says, I have come that you may have life and have life to the fullest. Now that does not mean an F-150, like my son would want. It does not mean a fancy car. It does not mean the best vacations. Life to the fullest means life with the Spirit of God living in you and empowering you to do God's work. I am in awe that we are called to do the work of the divine, that the divine God trusts us to do such powerful work blows my mind because I screw up all the time. And yet, he says, you can do it. And I'm going to give you the tools to do it through the Holy Spirit. I'm amazed by that. When I was in Cuba, there we go. When I was in Cuba, um, I told you that I saw literal miracles before my eyes. 
They gathered in these worship settings um, outside of Havana in these little house homes where they would make a sanctuary wherever they could. One of the places we met was literally this tiny alley between two houses. And they had put like a corrugated um, metal over the alleyway and put a shower curtain in the back of the alleyway for a backdrop. And it was only like five or six chairs wide. And we crammed in this long, narrow alleyway to worship God. In this picture, I don't know if you can see it, but this is someone's driveway. And they did the same thing where they put that corrugated metal over the top of a driveway. And they decorated it with whatever they could. And we gathered for worship in the driveway. My last Sunday there, um, us American pastors were invited to bless individuals and to pray for individuals in the congregation. So they called us up front and we stood up front and this is in Havana in the big Methodist church there. And they said, if you want a blessing by the American pastors, come forward. The entire congregation came forward. As American pastors, um, they felt it was an honor to be blessed by us. And so literally lines formed all throughout the church. And I stood next to one of my professors and I watched him bless people and bless people. And as he did it, and this isn't just the cute little hands-on American blessing that we do or let's hold hands. This is like, bam, right on their head and powerful. And you can anoint them with oil on their foreheads. And I just was watching. And as he prayed over people, they were so filled with the Holy Spirit. And we use the term slain in the Holy Spirit, where they would become so overwhelmed that they would literally just collapse and fall on their knees. Or their legs would go out before them and they would literally be laying on the ground. That overwhelmed with the Spirit that you can't even control your own body, your own actions, because you have given yourself completely over to the power of the Spirit. And when that would happen, as an American, it was so strange because we would just step over the body <laughs> and move on to bless the next person. And there would be people all over the ground overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit. But I'll never forget this one man came forward. And he was older, and his hands were like cupped like this. They were like crippled in pain. And so he came forward to myself and the, prof the professor next to me, and he held out his hands like this. And I put my hand on his back, and the professor put his hand on his forehead, and we prayed. Now, if you know anything about my Spanish, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> but God spoke through me words I didn't even know how to translate. I have spoke words of victory, freedom, words of salvation in Spanish. And as I did, that man started to cry. And as he cried, and we buckled in and embraced the power of the Holy Spirit coming on us, his hands went from this to this. From crippled and clenched to straight out relaxed. And he held his hands like this. And as we wrapped up our prayer, he went like this. And he said, Gloria de Dios, glory to God. And we're all crying and bawling. And the whole congregation, different people are being prayed for. And this is all going on. And I looked at my professor. And I knew a miracle of healing had been done right before my eyes. I knew that the Holy Spirit had come on this man because he knew the Holy Spirit would and he fully embraced it and the power of healing came on him. Now, I don't know what happened when he left that sanctuary that day. I don't know what his injury or ailment was. I don't know what he did for a living and if his hands stayed straight and strong or not. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the glory of God came down in that moment and said, you, professor, you, Trish, 
you, man, have a job to do in this world, and I'm going to empower you to do it right in this moment. And the physical manifestation of the Holy Spirit showed itself in that healing. But not just for the sake of healing, for the sake of doing the work that God has called us to do. We are all called to do work for God. Every single person has something that God wants you to do. So the question is, what is it? What is it that God has called you to do? And how is the Holy Spirit going to empower you to do it? I can't answer that question for you. But I know that when you push in, when you come to God and you say, show me, Spirit, fill me, Spirit, empower me, Spirit, that those prayers are met. So we're going to go to God in a time of prayer, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I want you to hold your hands out, and in whatever posture you feel, clenched, if that's how you're feeling, crippled, if that's how you're feeling, strong and relaxed, if that's how you're feeling. And as we pray, with our hands out, let's ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. Please pray with me. Lord God, Holy Spirit God, Spirit of fire God, come, come, reveal, show us what work you have called us to today, this week, this month, this season of life. Show us what you have called us to do and then empower us. Give us the strength, give us the courage, give us the resources, give us the character, the timing, whatever it is that we need to serve you, Lord God. Spirit of God, we cry out to you. Holy Spirit, fill us, empower us, guide us. Bring us into your mission. And all God's people said, Amen.